the race, but he will start once again from that pole position, looking to make amends here in race two. Well then, my name is Matt Dunn, joined as ever by Neil Morrison in the commentary box. Fran Wilde will be down on the grid, speaking to whoever she can ahead of this one. Neil, what did you make of that first outing? I very much enjoyed it, I must admit. Yeah, me too, Matt. It was uh, a race befitting of the occasion, I would say. The fact that, uh, well, we had a really interesting battle for the win, which went right the way to the last lap. It was decided on the last lap. We had plenty of drama with a couple of big hitters going down during the race and also a pretty interesting fight for third, all the way back in third place. But uh, Matteo Ferrari, pole sitter, courtesy of a really quick lap time that he posted yesterday in qualifying he will be looking to make amends for a big big mistake in today's first race here it is then coming into the museum corner although he has uh, we did talk about it at the end of the race it was under investigation so he actually crashed under a yellow flag there was an incident there the lap before and obviously he can't crash under a yellow flag it's not allowed even in a race situation so he's been given a long lap penalty to serve in this very race that makes his chances for a victory even more difficult Fran Wall, good afternoon again good afternoon yeah i was just gonna add obviously like you said can't do that unfortunately it's a little bit of a uh, automatic situation uh, so he will have that penalty but i did just ask him how he was without kind of engaging just pointed at him and then did the thumbs up and he was like yeah and did the next time more kind of hand symbol you know the one i mean if you've watched racing for a while i hate that one so i know <laughs> but hopefully then he is all okay to uh, try and get a little bit more from this second outing here today yeah thanks friend Ferrari obviously crashed the lap after both uh, Cassidy and Mikel Pons had crashed out down at turn seven. And uh, we're not actually sure if it was uh, separate incidents or if they crashed together. We didn't see a replay of that one. But um, yeah, obviously, um, Matteo Ferrari will have to uh, serve that penalty in the first lap or two of this race. Jordi Torres, though, he was the man of the moment earlier today with a clinical overtake at turn three, which uh, ultimately was good enough to win the first uh, race of the Moto E World Championship in 2023. Torres starting on the front foot. Yeah, I really enjoy that uh, that ride from Torres. He was sort of off the back of the leading duo of Ferrari and Garzo for a little bit. And just I wonder whether he even had anything for them, but clearly he did. He was just biding his time, saving his tyres, because it is a bit of a semi-endurance game, this. You you are very easily able to burn up your tyres big time in these Moto E races. And uh, he just bided his time. There he was, struck at the end when it was the most important. We just saw on your screens there, Randy Krummenacker, the Swiss rider, a debut podium in his first outing in Moto E. Returning to the Grand Prix paddock as well, that was pretty awesome from him, Neil. Yeah, it really was impressive stuff from Krumenaka, one of five rookies in the Moto E World Championship this year. It was a good ride from this man as well. Kevin Manfredi eventually came home in seventh. Might have even had a top six on the cards for Manfredi, but I think he cut the circuit through the Shimano Boeuf S's and uh, he had to serve a long lap penalty before taking a shortcut. Eventually left him in seventh. Nico Spinelli, another man that will be uh, looking to make amends for uh, a crash in race one. Spinelli was sitting, initially it was a lead group of four. Spinelli was sitting just on the back of that. A really impressive ride for him in his first race in this championship. But unfortunately he crashed on at turn 11. But he'll be starting from sixth place, second row of the grid, looking to put it right in race two. Well then, safety car is off on the uh, on its own exciting lap as well, and we, it says three minutes to a warm-up lap. So we didn't actually get that before. Uh, maybe Frank can cast a little bit of uh, of uh, more uh, information on that one. Uh, but, can uh, confirm. I don't think there should have been a last-minute regulation change. Uh, it's probably just a little graphics hiccup. Ah, well there you go then. So uh, on our timing screen, it's not quite right. I thought, yeah, I thought we were going racing and, and whatnot, but uh, but never mind. That's okay. Yeah, no warm-up laps in uh, Model E, of no, course. It, I didn't think so, and I was, that's why I'm confused by the timing screen. I thought I wasn't told about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just on that, Matt, I mean, uh, no warm-up laps. So these guys, basically, the first taste of this Le Mans track they got today, earlier, uh, was obviously first lap off the race. And uh, the laps that the leaders put in on that first lap were really quite impressive indeed. Upon two seconds off what was then the, uh, the new circuit record. So right down on the pace from the very start the likes of Garzo who started so well Torres and then um, Matteo Ferrari who eventually crashed out here is Mikel Pons who was fighting in that second group earlier on today sporting the number 77 for the first time this year 
after uh, Domi Egeter, the reigning World Cup winner, of course. He is uh, in World Superbikes this year. He's not taking part in this year's series. Mikel Pons then takes over at the number 77. A crasher down at turn seven, as I previously mentioned. Mikel Pons starting from the back of the third row in ninth position. There is Andrea Mantovani, unfortunately crashed out in the race earlier on as well. Sad to see him go down, but all OK, fortunately, uh, raring to go for this one as well. You can never really count out Mantovani from a bit of an interesting result, I, I would say, Neil, can you? He's, he's, a, he's a fascinating character. He got that podium before it was taken away from Mugello, so let's see. There as well. Um, it was a. It's been a little bit of an interesting season for Spinelli and Mantovani in Supersport, where they've had some really good pace and then just made a couple of mistakes. So let's see what they've got now. Yeah, fair enough, Brad. Thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. You, as like I say, you can never really count them out. This is the grid there, though. If you uh, perhaps didn't see it beforehand uh, in race one, Ferrari from Garza and Torres, then Krimanaka, Manfredi, Spinelli, Cassade, Zanoni, Pons. Then you have Mantovani, uh, Zaccone, and. Kubo uh, read down there on row five. Row six is Tito Rabat, Alessio Finello, and Luca Salvadori, along with Mika Perez and Maria Herrera. No, Eric Granado, Eric, we wish you the very best in your recovery from injury in the World Superbikes and last weekend in Barcelona. We very much look forward to his return to Motor We action going forward. So then. Still says warm up, but anyways, here's Matteo Ferrari. I mean, what can he do in this race now? Then, I mean, he normally such a cool and calm character, Neil, but he uh, he messed it up earlier. I've got to admit, he did a little bit. Yep, he had just hit the front after uh, taking the lead down at La Chapelle, where Hector Garza was just having a few problems, couldn't quite hold the line. Ferrari was on hand to take full advantage of that. You have to feel we're going to see that battle again between the first and second qualifiers in the start of this race as well, but you can certainly not rule out this man either, Jordi Torres, who uh, really took his time to get himself into the contest before increasing pace and then uh, obviously building up towards that last lap move. I think Torres has to start as the favourite again, Matt. Absolutely. Garzo said that he was finding the problems with the front closing, the front end closing, and he basically needed crashing many a times during that race. Had nothing left for Torres, but can he overcome him this time around? Yeah, and it was a bit of a race of attrition earlier on today. Five crashers, uh, just 12 finishers. So um, it will be interesting to see if one or two guys adopt a different approach here because the likes of Ferrari, I mean, a podium was there for him if he uh, wasn't maybe pushing on trying to win the race. So uh, let's see whether some of these guys up front adopt a bit of a different approach. I rather fancy not because the season is still young, of course, as uh, the technicians depart the grid and we get ready for the start in just over 30 seconds time now. Well then, fires us down, ready to go. 30 seconds, the red flag won't.